When you watch Reed Shepard, it's just easy to see a player that can be very good at the NBA level. His skill set is valuable in the modern NBA as a combo guard. He checks off a ton of boxes in terms of intangibles. And it's just really hard to see him not having a long NBA career barring health. While I don't think Reed Shepard was the highest ceiling prospect ever, I have no problems with him going third overall to the Houston Rockets. In fact, that was the ideal landing spot for him in my opinion. Shepard is a player that brings a lot to the table to like, and Houston fans should be excited about what he brings to this roster now, as well as what he could bring in the future. But quickly, before we go any further, if you do like basketball, I'd really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and notify whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time, and liking and subscribing are the two best ways can help me out the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Anyways, let's talk about Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard is a 6'2", 182-pound combo guard with a 6'3 wingspan. He doesn't have the most incredible physical profile. It's not like he stands out in terms of his height, his weight, or his athleticism, doesn't have long arms. But that doesn't mean he isn't a good player. What stood out most is his statistical profile. At Kentucky, he was pretty productive for a guy that came off the bench, and his efficiency was off the charts, which is something that was backed up by the tape. Separd has a very translatable skill set to the modern NBA. He's a guard that can play off the ball as a scorer and connecting playmaker. He's a high field player with great shot selection. He was arguably the best three-point shooter in the class. He's great at the catch makes him a great boy spacer immediately, and he has some promise as a pull-up shooter, although you would like to see him more. He can attack closeouts, he has great touch around the basket, he can hit a mid-range shot. He's not a lost cause as a creative, solid first step, but he is a bit limited, not a great separator off the bounds, doesn't get to the rim a lot. Although given how much of a monster he can be as an off-ball scorer, I do think he's a good enough on-ball player for his archetype. He's a good playmaker in the connecting role, his vision is very good, he makes great reads, doesn't make a ton of mistakes. Now I do think he's a bit limited as a playmaker because of the on-ball creation limitations, and I do think that will limit his ceiling as a playmaker, but I don't think it's something that will limit him from being a good player. Defensively, he has a good motor, he's an active player off the ball, great hands, does gamble a bit, does get lost a bit, but that's common for young players. I think overall what he showed off the ball defensively was very promising. He can be a great defensive playmaker in my opinion. However, I do think that he will just naturally be limited because of his size. I don't think he'll ever be a great point of attack defender, but I think he'll be good enough defensively to be called someone that isn't a liability, just based off the motors, based off the off-ball playmaking, and the fact that it's not like he lacks the effort defensively. Shepard just has an archetype that screams good NBA player. Only time will tell if he becomes that, but you just look at him play, and it's very easy to see that path. I don't know if Reed Shepard will start right away, but I do think he will make an impact right away. From a pure talent and ability perspective, he would be my favorite to win Rookie of the Year, just because of how polished his skill set is and how easily it can translate to this level in any role or setting. However, Houston is looking to be competitive this year, so his minutes are harder to project just based off how Ime Yudoka distributes minutes for young players. But I also would be shocked if he's not in the rotation. I think Fred Van Fleet is a great mentor to have for him as a smaller guard that found a way to be at least starter level and at best all-star in some years good. And I also think that having a player like a Men Thompson next to him to be that point of attack defender so Reed doesn't have to is going to be valuable. Amen is a big reason why I liked this fit with Houston so much. I think Reed would fit with any team, but especially Houston because he doesn't need the basketball in his hands to be effective. So he can be an off-ball playmaker like Fred Van Fleet. He can be somebody that plays off of Fred Van Fleet even. 
I think he can play off of his goalie like Jalen Green as they try to figure out if he's worth investing in long term. He can play off of Men Thompson as they try to figure out how to give him more on ball reps. And he can also play off Alpin Sangoon, who the Rockets look like will be running the offense through. And I really like his fit alongside Jabari Smith as two floor spacers on this Houston team. Depending on how many minutes he gets, I could see anywhere from 8 to 13 points per game, 2 to 4 rebounds per game, 2 to 4 assists per game, and around 47, 39, 83 splits as a rookie. Whether he's a rotation guy, a six man, or even a starter, he's going to find a way to be productive and efficient with his role in minutes. It's too hard to look at his skill, feel, and motor and believe he won't have an impact on a Houston team that looks to be competitive this upcoming season. I think Reed Shepard has won the highest fours from his draft class. At worst, I think he's a legit rotation piece as an off-ball four spacer and connecting passer. Someone that can play a similar role to Sam Hauser, I think he has better passing feel than Hauser, but similar situation. A guy that's in your rotation, he will play in the postseason, but how many minutes he gets will be very matchup dependent and also how he performs. I know it may sound disrespectful to compare him to Sam Hauser if you don't know what Sam Hauser is as a player, but the four of a guy who's good enough to get around 15 to 19 minutes in the NBA Finals when the shot is falling is a pretty high four. The middle ground outcome for his career is a solid to good starter. Someone that can space the four, attack a closeout, make good reads as a connector. Not comparing him to the Knicks version because that player would be higher than what I'm describing, but I think somewhat offensively, like the best version of Bucks Dante DiVincenzo, a guy that averages around 11 to 14 points per game with solid all around numbers for his usage on a good team, and that is somebody that can start on a contender, uh, and of course, if he was next, that would be even higher and outcome for him. Speaking of high-end outcomes, I believe the highest-end outcome is a high-level starter that is in top 60 conversations, maybe even top 50, friends all-star, someone that can be really productive as a fourth, maybe even third offensive option on a contender, put up around 15 to 7 points per game, you know, 4 to 5 rebounds per game, 3 to 5 assists per game, play and thrive off of lead creators, make good reads as a connecting passer, but also be able to have stretches that relieve pressure from the main options as well. While I'm not comparing him to either of these players based on play style and archetype because I don't think he's going to reach the defensive heights those guys have, and he's also not quite the same physically and doesn't really play the same position, but in terms of caliber of player, I think of guys like Derek White and Mikael Bridges, guys who I think or no, are capable of averaging 20 plus points per game with enough usage in a high roll, but it's also clear that if they're averaging 20 plus points per game, it's not going to be the most efficient production, and the team is probably in a rebuild or no man's land. But on a contender, they can put up, again, 15 to 17 points per game as a third through fifth option, which is a more natural role for them as a high level complementary piece. While I'm not sure Reed Shepard will ever reach perennial all-star heights, I think that he is a player that can reach the heights of being like a fringe all-star, someone in the right situation that could make a few of them. And even with the self-creation limitations, he's going to be good. And that's a player that I look at and say, if he can reach what Derek White is offensively, Mikael Bridges is offensively in the right situation. What Austin Reeves is offensively, although he's not really similar to Austin Reeves because Austin Reeves gets to the rim a lot more and is a much better foul driver, but similar level of offensive player in my opinion. If he can reach those heights offensively, that's a player that can contribute in a real way on a contender. And that's a valuable player to have. Reed Shepard is someone that was a bit divisive among draft people and fans. Some thought he had a low ceiling and was just going to be a role player due to his limitations. Others looked at his absurd statistical profile in college and think that he's the next great guard. Some think he's the next Grayson Allen. Others think he's the next Steph Curry. 
I fall somewhere in the middle on him. I don't think he has this superstar ceiling, barring a massive leaping creation ability. I just don't think it's likely. It's possible, but I don't see any signs that suggest he can take that kind of leap. But I also don't think he's even close to reaching his ceiling either. Right now, he can be a solid role player on a good to great team. But I also think he can be better. Even if he's not the high level on ball creator that Kyrie Irving, Damian Lillard, or Steph Curry, or even a guy in his draft class like Rob Dillingham is. In fact, I would say if you combine Rob Dillingham and Reed Zappard, you get a guy that goes first overall and is also a very elite guard prospect. But that's not the case. With Reed as his own player, he can be productive and efficient at this level. And it's not like he's a lost cause on the ball either. It says that the ceiling might be limited based off the tape in that regard. What I just described is a high level starter on a potential contender, and maybe even a fringe all star in some years. Would you like the third overall pick to be more than just a top 60 player? In an ideal world, yes you would, but given this draft class doesn't have a ton of high-end talent and the fact that Houston is looking to compete, they massively exceeded expectations this season, remember, they got this pick from the Nets, getting a player that could potentially contribute in a rotation right away, and also has potential to be a player that's a top 3-5 to five option offensively on a contender, and that's what Houston's goal is obviously, to get back to contention, is a good pick to make. You know at least that barring health, he will be solid to some extent. And there's enough of a ceiling that is high enough to feel comfortable taking him with a high pick in the draft. I love this pick for the Rockets because it's a pick that makes sense for whatever direction they're going. And I can't wait to see how Reed Shepard performs in the NBA. And he maybe is somebody that might even outperform the expectations I have for him.